You might be thinking, what's going on here? Well, I'm inside a store shopping for some horseshoes for a TIG brazing video. I ordered this book on horseshoe projects written by Barbie the Welder for a couple of different reasons. Number one, Barbie's a good friend of mine and I wanted to show her some support. Number two, I wanted to get some ideas for a horseshoe project. There's, some, there's a lot of cool projects in the book, but the project I thought I would do for today is not in there. And it's overlaying uh, a horseshoe with silicon bronze. You ever heard that saying uh, about lucky people? Well, he must have a gold-plated horseshoe up his... So what I was thinking, well, what if I overlaid a horseshoe with silicon bronze and then polished it to where it looked like it was a gold horseshoe? That lets us talk about gas shielding, material prep, pulse settings, and lots of other things. Now, silicon bronze is a very useful rod for practical applications, like overlaying a worn thin area on a hydraulic line or hinges and, and uh, latches on industrial furniture for that brazed look. But it's also used by a lot of metal sculptors and metal artists, and it's fun to work with. So we're gonna do some overlay with TIG brazing on a horseshoe with silicon bronze. Let's do it. With TIG brazing, you need to be clean, bright metal, no mill scale at all. Clean, bright metal, as well as good argon shielding is what's going to help that silicon bronze to flow. I'm going to be using 332nd diameter silicon bronze filler metal. In addition to having clean, bright metal free from mill scale, I need really good gas shielding. Now this 12 cup is going to do that for me. This is the ceramic version of our new navigator kit. It comes with these furic gas lenses with an o-ring groove. And what that does is if you ever want to go to clear cups, you don't have to buy a new adapter kit. All you need to do is put an O-ring on it and you can use clear cups. Now I'm using about one pulse per second here with 332 silicon bronze lay wire technique, which just means simply I'm not pulling the wire in and out of the puddle. That seems to work really well because I'm not looking for penetration here. I'm just looking to flow the braze metal. By not taking the rod in and out of the puddle, I'm not introducing any extra oxides in the puddle. I'm using the Prime Weld 225 here. It's got pulse settings, and here they are. There's really only three settings to be concerned with, starting from the left here. 30% base current, also called background current, one pulse per second, and the pulse duty at 45%. I've proven out these settings from several other projects and other videos. Here's one of them where I'm doing lap joints on 11 gauge steel. Now this is just a little hot. You can see I'm nipping that corner a little bit. You don't really want to melt any base metal in, but it, it does happen. As long as you don't do too much, you, you'd be okay. Another application was this where I, I made a, a little hammer project, kind of a Thor hammer, dead blow hammer, where I had BBs in there. It makes for a really cool look, but I'm using those same basic settings for this horseshoe overlay. So I'll, I'll show a few good tight arc shots like this. You can see my technique. I'm moving ahead on the high part of the pulse and then just backing up just a little bit while it, it goes to that low amperage. And that's keeping the puddle cool and keeping it relatively clean. If you get silicon bronze too hot, you start noticing a lot more oxides and scum floating around in the puddle. And so these pulse settings really help prevent that. Plus, I stopped every, every couple of minutes to let it cool and to clean off oxide and heat tent. Now you might be thinking this is gonna take forever. This is gonna be a long video to overlay this whole horseshoe. But I'm gonna speed things up quite a bit. It did take me longer than I thought, a good couple of hours. And the reason it took so long is because you can't get something like this too hot. And that's part of the reason I have it laying on this big aluminum block. And sometimes I would clamp it to the aluminum block to draw some heat out of it. And sometimes I would cool it off in some water. But periodically I stopped and cleaned off the oxides with a flap disc to make sure I was working with clean, shiny, bright metal because that's how silicon bronze works. It needs clean metal to flow good on. The pulse settings really help to keep the puddle cool. Occasionally the rod will come out of the puddle, just get it right back in there. I think one of the biggest tricks here is just to not let the piece get too hot. I tend to get impatient and want to keep going but you have to stop, let things cool, clean metal, and go again for the best results. But I found this pulsing works better than anything I've used. Now you can dip it in and out while you're pulsing too. You don't have to use the lay wire. 
but I just think the lay wire works really well. Even though I cleaned this horseshoe to clean bright metal before I ever started, some of the surfaces still get oxidized and I have to stop periodically and clean them up. This next bead is right against that aluminum backing and that's a kind of a tip for you. Anytime you're doing a build up bead like this, if you can weld it against some backing like this, it really helps it go better. It traps argon, pulls heat out, you really can't go wrong welding against aluminum backing on an application like this with silicon bronze. We're going to try to speed things up going forward here and get to the part where we're doing the polishing. Silicon bronze or copper can really clog a flap disc so some beeswax tends to help just like it helps on aluminum. So after I hit it with a flap disc and get it fairly smooth I go to a Scotch-Brite wheel and then move on to a cotton pad with Jewelers Rouge and I end up with something that resembles a gold horseshoe. We got all the common filler metals for carbon steel, stainless steel and aluminum and silicon bronze. I'd appreciate it if you would shop around at weldmonger.com. That is how I support these videos. We'll see you next time.